Alright, how's it going? Okay, so, uh, today I want to do a really, really brief intro to World Machine. World Machine is essentially a terrain generation software. Um, it creates height fields, so a black and white image that you can use to displace geometry uh, based on values from 0 to 1, where 0 is black and white is 1, the highest one. Um, so... I'll give you a quick demonstration of uh, how we can work in World Machine to get a few different results. So to begin with, it's a node-based uh, software. So it runs from left to right. You have a series of inputs and you can generate different uh, types of noises, different types of layers that you want to input, and then you can perform operations on them to um, say distort it or erode it and things like that and you can actually take a lot of the information that it generates while doing those operations to pipe out later on for something like a game engine to determine where certain materials are and stuff like that so I'm going to give you a really rough example of that today so um, to begin with uh, let's have a look at some of the properties so up the top here you've got a bunch of different um, buttons that let you do stuff things like load and save and create a new thing and all good stuff like that and uh, the first one that we're interested in here are the world settings. I think it's called world settings. Device work, no, 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 we'll just click it. Project settings, that's the one. So this is where you can set things like the relative size of the terrain that you're working on. So at the moment it's set to be at a width of eight by eight kilometers. Um, so let's say I wanna make it 12 uh, because I have the uh, allow non-square extents unchecked it's going to make sure that it's square most of the time you will want to work with square terrains but there'll be situations in which you want to tick that box and make that something like six and then it'll be you can see up here in the preview window that it's made it a lot more narrow so i'm going to set it back to 12 by 12 and we also have this is a really important one here as well the the build resolution so this is actually determining the size of the textures that you're eventually going to output that also has a significant effect on how long it takes to generate the terrain so what you may end up doing is wanting to work at something a little bit lower like 1025 or they've got this plus one because uh, sometimes when you work with terrains you need a one pixel border in order to prevent um, spikiness around the edges because the edge pixel can sometimes just be set to one or it'll wrap or clamp or like there's filtering applied to the texture when it does the terrain projection so you get nastiness so we'll leave that checked uh, it's essentially 1024 so that's a good resolution to be working at you also have these tiled build options and i'm not going to go into that right now not least because i haven't managed to make it work terribly well for myself i need to educate myself more about that but it's essentially so that you can build almost an entire well essentially an entire world that might be 100 kilometers across and then break it down into smaller tiles so that when you bring it into your game engine, you're not having to work with a 100 kilometer piece of terrain. They can actually be broken down and um, use level of detail models, essentially use uh, lower detail geometry to represent the general contours of that terrain if it's a very long way away from the player. So um, then we've got the general setup and the you can do things like put your project name in there and stuff like that. So Weevil, all that kind of business. Uh, but you can also change the actual vertical scale of the terrain. So if you wanted to make really massive mountains, you would increase this maximum elevation. I'm going to leave it all as default. Um, and we'll have a look at some of these buttons up the top. So right now we've got the device view. This shows us the nodes that we're working with. These are the outputs and these are the inputs. So we can plug them into one another and do a bunch of different cool stuff. Um, then we've got this layout view which shows us basically a top-down view of what the noise generator would produce um, if we had an infinite terrain. So you can see you can just keep zooming and zooming and zooming and you can see what effect the noise would have uh, as well as the boundaries of the area that you're actually working on. So that's the bit that we would be exporting right now. Then you've got this worldview which is essentially a 3d representation of the same thing it's pretty low resolution uh, because it's trying to work very quickly but again we can see the boundaries that we want to work with um, or that we have set at the moment next we have one of the most useful views which is actually the 3d representation of the terrain that uh, is kind of sliced out and can be higher detail and it's actually giving us an idea of what we'd be exporting then the last one is a 2d raster view of just that area 
which is all well and good. So let's start with the device view. The first um, node, I guess, operator that we have is the advanced Perlin. And um, this is a noise algorithm. It's math, sort of like, you know, you've seen Mandelbrot fractals or fractal noise generators and things like that, that are really useful because even when you're very close to them, the math still holds up and it can continue to generate more and more detailed noise. And it works at a lot of different scales. So if we double click on that, as with all of these nodes, we'll get the options for them coming up. So having a quick look over the side here, at what our result would be, whenever we have one of these nodes selected, it's going to display that current node's output. So it's not showing us everything all the way down the track to the output, it's just showing us that one. So I've got controls here so I can actually control the relative scale. So I could make this area have a very high frequency of noise, lots and lots of wrinkles, lots of variation. Or, uh, I, so I've got hills there, I can take it up to mountains, so that'd be kind of mountain ranges. They're quite helpful with these names here. Or I can go all the way up to continents, which would only be really useful if my terrain was really, really large. So that 100 kilometer one that I was talking about, we can't really see a lot of detail there. So um, all of these different settings here, we can change the style of noise. So I'll bring the scale down a little bit. You got things like the basic one, which is kind of wrinkly, mountainy looking things. That's actually pretty cool. You've got ridged ones that have kind of concave areas that reach peaks, which would be really good for um, snowy mountainscapes and things like that. You've got billowy ones, which would probably be better for, I don't know, maybe like volcanic areas or something like that. You'd probably throw some sharpness in there as well. Uh, smooth ridged, which is kind of a, a, another version of ridged, but it's, I guess, smoother. Uh, smooth billowy, so you know you basically have two versions of a couple of these. Um, sharp ridged for really kind of um, actually maybe that would be really that'd be an interesting volcanic one or like an alien landscape or something like that. Uh, you got flat middle, terraced, and this other one, Stephen's choice one. I don't know that terraced one actually looks pretty cool. I don't think I've used that before. That might be new. Um, so. You can do stuff like that, but you've also got some presets up the top here. You got your starting settings, uh, ones for canyons, um, experimental Perlin ones, you know, all different types of things. So I'm going to set this back to starting settings and I'm going to change. Oh, it's not letting me change that option now. That's a bit, that's a bit nasty. I'll go back to my originals. Starting settings. Let me change it. Let me change the style. All right, whatever. Uh, let me pick a different one here. I like the wrinkled one and I'll bring it down in scale a bit. So that's cool. All right, bam. We've got our Perlin. The next operator that's connected to, we've got the primary output that's plugged into the primary input for this terrace. Now what that essentially does is it makes that whole section. I'll see if I can make this a little bit bigger. No, it does not make it bigger. I think we can have an additional window that's showing us. Oh, that's cool. That's new in the new version. That's really helpful. So we can have another window here that we can zoom around and have a look at while we're working. I'll just try and arrange this because obviously I'm only recording one screen. Uh, and uh, I forgot to mention these build settings. So we've got the build button here, the green one. And that will essentially process the entire chain. Every single node that you've got in here, and you can have quite a few, um, will um, be processed. And that can take some time. You can also use this yellow one here, which is build to current selection. So it'll go through everything up until the node you have selected so that you can just preview that. So I'll do that one now, even though we only have two. And it's actually done a more detailed high resolution version of that terrain. So it's showing us exactly what it would look like at 1024 or 1025 pixels. If I go back to advanced Perlin, you can see that it's generating some really nice kind of little ridges and what look like little boulder areas and stuff like that. But when I apply the terrace, it actually splits it up and takes that contour and applies a profile to it to give you some flat areas and that sort of thing. If we mess with some of these settings, a terrace method, um, we can increase the number of terraces to something ridiculous. And then we'll have to reprocess it, I think. And see what that, so you can see there's a ton more little tiny ones there. Um, we can also do things like modify the terrace shape. I'll bring that number down a little bit and make it something like six. 
and terrace layering. So how... Oh, wow. Very pretty. Oh, dear. Uh, how much blending there is between those terrace layers. So I'll just put it there. Looks a bit lo-fi now. Let's rebuild to that point. And I've got kind of a cool little terraced bit of business. Could be a little canyon thing. I can see some gameplay potentially, you know, with a bit of gameplay in this sort of area here. But I'd probably want to offset this noise so that this little depth bit is in the middle. So if I go back to my advanced Perlin, I can use this transformation to actually shift the area of my uh, terrain that is in the center. So I can actually offset it. And now if I were to recalculate that and go back to Terrace, I'd have to recalculate that as well. Bam, I got my little bit of business. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you before we sign off for now, because I am hitting the time limit, is the erosion. So along these tabs, we have all the different uh, inputs, outputs, filters, all kinds of different things, modifications that we can make to this height map as it goes through the chain. So after I've got my advanced pearl in, then I've applied a terrace to give it those sharp edges, but they're a bit too uniform. So what I'd like to do is erode them. So I can go through, we've got some macros, we've got different generators, so you can bring existing height maps in and continue to work on them and make modifications. Um, the different output types, so that we can preview things and actually write them out to image files to use in a game engine or for you know, pre-rendered uses, things like that. Combiners that can take two things and put them together. These filters are really powerful because um, they uh, allow you to make broad changes to the entire terrain whilst maintaining a lot of the detail that you've had coming in. Things like noise and displacement. Um, you have a separate terracing tool there that you can use, which is sent, I think it actually is the same one as, as there because it's blue. Um, but then we've got these natural ones. So if we click on these, we've got erosion, thermal weathering, snow, and coastal erosion. I tend to use the uh, erosion one the most because it's pretty quick and it's pretty cool. So if I hover over there and I actually click on the line that's connecting the two, we can see that it's actually, um, hang on, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, it actually automatically inserts it in between those two. So I can see a bit of a preview there. The erosion hasn't been calculated yet. So it goes all low res. Again, we have a bunch of different options for this, things like how long we want the erosion to have theoretically taken place. Um, uh, how much sediment we want to travel from one area to another so it's subject to gravity It's going to erode things and actually drag them down into this canyon um, What else have we got? We've got some filtering types um, We also have this geological time enhancement where it takes these values uh, Even the erosion base duration and you can enable it and make it seem as though it's taken thousands of years So if you wanted to do some kind of animation where it starts out all nice and lush when the dinosaurs are there and then it erodes over a million years or something like that, you could actually export two of these height maps and animate between them in order to make that terrain look like it was eroding. You'd have to do some cool stuff with textures as well. But it's a cool extra little tool. Uh, you also have presets. The presets are pretty sweet. They have a few different um, behaviors. There's one that's good with terraces. Um, I've always liked a flood of slurry. Um, and I think that that's meant to sort of uh, indicate an area with lots of clay and lots of sediment carry and that sort of thing. So we'll choose that one and I will just calculate that. So it's going pretty quick because the text is not terribly uh, high resolution. But when I look at this, check it out. It's actually carried all of the sediment and given me cool rocky things and it looks a lot more natural. And all of that has come from that. So we've got our advanced purlin, which gives us nice little wrinkly ridges and things like that. Then we've terraced it. So we've given it kind of a, a mesa look like uh, in sort of desert canyons and things like that. And then we've eroded that. So we can see the remnants of those terraces there, but they've actually been broken away by fluid and dragged down into this base area. So that's how we would create a terrain. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can actually generate a texture for this. So check it out if you want to. I uh, hope this has helped and have a good one.